That's good. That's what I told them we did. So what can you tell us about the rest of the series? Hi. Hi. You're going to sit with me? No. Okay. Awesome. Either one. Yeah. So what can we tell them about the rest of the season? That's epic. It's just really, really exciting. Here's here's what we can. I'm not going to. I'll give you. I'll give you a substantive answer. Okay. That's what that was. I thought it was good. It was. Always in my mind, the show's been: will these, will the hundred be able to overcome that sort of inner conflict, that Lord of the Flies dynamic, in time to survive the bigger external conflict that's coming? And at the end of five, we saw the grounder. And has anybody seen six and seven? Okay, so you know that six and seven really become more grounder heavy, mm -hmm. right? And that goes like exponentially, exponentially further. From now to the finale, and the finale is like oh my it's God. like brave. Like I mean, it's, it's <laughs> ridiculous. So, so it's a full on. They find themselves in, a, in the middle of a of a war, essentially. So, okay, so it's right to fear the grounders. It is right to fear the grounders, but you know, the, nothing's black and white. The grounders aren't evil. The grounders think that. That the hundred are acting provocatively. It's, they it's actually in their like a, it's a total miscommunication, really. You know, when you think about it, it's, you know, two two groups of people who don't know nothing about each other, um, who are afraid and threatened by one another. Whereas, I mean, if you brought them together at some point, you probably see that they're exactly the same. You know? There's certainly more things, that, similarities, than there are probably differences. Yeah. Or at least there are some. And the truth is, and that's a big episode coming down the road, is episode nine, really, where we ask that very question. We, we tell the story of that misperception. You know, the grounders think that we're acting aggressively towards them. We landed in their yard. We're firing missiles. In five, in five, they fired missiles. They don't know that those are signs to the art. No. That looks like they're shooting missiles at us. Yeah. So, shit gets pretty intense between the grounders. Certainly. So, are we finding out more about the grounders, like their history yeah, in that so episode as well? Or? Um, about their history? No. What we do find out is that they're all, you know, these, and I think it's safe to say already, that the clues are there just by seeing the grounder at the end of episode five. He's a warrior. He's got weapons. He's he's got armor. These people didn't just start looking like that when these guys were, right? They're fighting somebody already. And the question gets asked, who is that? And so by the end of the season we tell we know who the the, the bad guys are. We know who the worst guys are. And then ultimately we know who the worser 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 the worst. <laughs> the worst. So. I have a. My question is: there seems to be kind of two stories happening, one on the Ark and one on the planet. Is there going to be a point where those stories actually really become one story? Me? So you know. All right. <laughs> I mean, in my mind, they're always one story. Yeah. In in my mind, they're always. I totally take your point that they're separate worlds completely, and I wanted that. From the beginning, I wanted to play in two sandboxes. I wanted the show to have that sort of juxtaposition between this claustrophobic, suffocating spaceship that's dying and this mysterious, wild, exploding with life world on ground. That was always part of the plan. But to me, they're emotionally connected, obviously, right? Because the people up there are worried about the, the, the hundred, and the people on the ground are worried about their parents, their loved ones, their friends. And so, to me, they never feel siloed, is the term that, that we use. You know, Game of Thrones keeps separate worlds happening for entire seasons. These people never connect. And it works dramatically, and, and I think it's an amazing show. Uh, and certainly one that we hold up as a, you know, we'll, you know we're not worthy kind of show. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so... Um, but the answer to your question is, despite that, it will become more integrated, sort yeah. of going forward. They, communication is established eventually, soon. Soon, yeah. She talks to Abby soon yeah. uh, in an amazing episode. I think it's seven. seven. That, was a, that was pretty emotional. It was pretty good. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Filming that was like, I was exhausted after that scene. <laughs> it was very, very emotional. 
Although you've, you've written a few of those for me, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah, He's yeah. really put me Clark through the ringer. Clark doesn't have fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, when I get scenes where I actually smile, I'm like, oh my god! <laughs> so exciting. It makes it more special. Less is more. Yeah, less is more. <laughs> the characters have really been, um, both on the ground and um, on the arc, their morality's been questioned or pushed, like what limits they have. And, um, you know, especially Bellamy on the ground. But going in episode seven, Clark really has, makes a difficult choice. So where, when you're writing it, how did you decide wh what those limits are and where they go? And then how is it to have Clark kind of have to make decision? I think that's one great thing about Clark's arc. Um, <laughs> I think uh, she, she does realize that the leadership comes with making really, really hard choices and not necessarily the ones that you thought you'd ever have to make. Um, yeah, it's, it's really difficult for her, but it, it, she becomes a much stronger person for it. I really like that, and you see a lot more of that happening throughout the series. And I think she also starts to, you know, obviously she is furious in so many ways mm. at her mother, yeah. but by the end of the season, she may just start to realize that there are, you know, she's making decisions that are not yeah. unlike the decisions that Abby's had to make. Yes. So, you know, we might see some kind of a reconciliation at some point. Maybe this year, maybe next year, we don't know. But, you know, certainly there's an understanding whether she can see it or not. Because, you know, in life, even though it's there right in front of your face, when you're pissed off at your parents or somebody that you love, it's hard to say, yeah, I'm, I'm just as bad as you. So that may not happen, but the point is the same. You know, she's figuring out how to be a leader, and sometimes that means you have to do the hard thing. In seven, certainly she does something that's morally questionable. And, you know, the thing I like about it is it doesn't work. 